Okay, welcome everyone. This is the May 21st free training with Kiko Chat. You can find all of these at learn.kikochat.com. I'm Lucas, I'm a software developer and open space facilitator. So I can answer all the questions that these great folks have posted. So I'm gonna share my screen and take a look. This is today's event, free training intro to Kiko. And on the right hand side, people have already started typing their questions here. So we'll go through this list of questions and please jump in at any time for all the folks that are listening live. Just go ahead and ask any questions and we'll answer them as we go. So number one, uh, let me give a quick orientation to the space here and then we can go line by line. So on the left hand side, when you arrive, your eye is drawn to, all right, there's some people here. Well, where are they? They are in the main room. When you see the main room, on the right hand side, it has a notes document and that is where you can put any notes for your meeting you can have multiple tabs here so the first tab can be announcements the second tab can be notes and as you see everybody's typing in a different color this is a simple tool called etherpad it has some simple text formatting options like this making some room for additional questions and then cleaning it up a little bit everybody types in a different color if I click over here, I can see everybody's color. When people are gone, however, you won't know who typed what. So if it's important, you wanna do something at the top where people type up here who the, what their name is, and then you could see that Tony's colors, for example, Tony's questions, for example, are turquoise. So every breakout space in Kiko comes with some notes that you can customize on the right-hand side and any other tool that you wanna put in there. There are some exceptions for some tools that don't work, like Mural is a very popular one. It will not allow embedding. However, um, many, many tools do allow embedding. And you can always link to any tool. So if you want to use Mural, you can at least link to it. And people in room three can go to the Mural you want there. And people in room four can go to the different Mural. We'll cover that. So in addition to the notes that you have on the right-hand side, on the left-hand side, you see that you can jump to any different breakout room. And you also see join video for the main room. We're in the main room join video for the main room. If I go over to room one, then I see a new notes document that I can type in over here. And my icon will update, so it shows that I'm in room one here. But you can see I'm still connected to video because I'm still talking to the folks by Zoom in the main room. They had all already clicked that green button at the top. Now that I'm in room one, I see a different button. It says join video for room one. So the law of two clicks, I will click over here. And then there's a pop-up on my screen that says, do you want to open Zoom? And I can click open Zoom, but I'm not going to do that since I'm already connected to audio and video up here in the main room. And I'll just click cancel. But you'll notice my video icon has moved. So that video icon just indicates not where someone's actually connected, although it's 99% accurate, it's where they last click the green button. And we do that because we don't always get confirmation back from Zoom that you joined the meeting in a timely fashion. Sometimes it takes hours and hours for that notification to happen. So I just went back to the main room and I clicked the green button and you'll see my icon went back there. It's because I've stayed connected to the main room the whole time. So during this training, you will get a chance to jump to other rooms and join video over there. But as participants, you can jump to any of these other rooms right now and you'll see your screen is gonna change and you'll see different notes, but you're still gonna be connected to video up here. So we give people the ability to walk about the conference space, see what's going on in other breakout rooms. And then if they wanna jump, then they can use the law of two clicks and turn on their video for that room. That'll disconnect them from the main room and it'll connect them to the room that they've, they've tried to join. So that's a brief orientation to the event space. We'll show some examples of different events that have happened in the past. And you can see that you can really customize these to your liking. We'll go with some of the questions here. I'm interested in making rooms, which gives them a topic and invite people to walk the rooms and then to go to divided Zoom chats and easily come back to the whole group. So I think that we covered that. Eva, did that answer your question, what we already discussed? Mm 
You may be on mute at the moment. It looks like that was Eva's yeah. question. Do you hear me? Yes, yes. Yeah. Well, um, I know that you can give the room also a name. So if you want to chat about a specific topic, you can give the room a name, isn't it? Absolutely. Let's take a look at how to do that. So I'll, I'm going to make, oh, you can give the room's names and you can also put topics here. The first thing I'll show is topics. So let's say oh, yeah, I want to put yeah. all of these questions in each room. So as the administrator, I can click admin controls and then set topics for breakout rooms and then just paste them in. I'm going to edit this one because it's very long. Well, you know what? We'll just let the, the long one stay. So I'm going to click Save Room Topics. And now you can see all the different rooms have all of our topics. So this is a very fast way to jump into an open space. You, you, people post their questions. In an open space event, you'd also have them write their names so that they take responsibility for the session that they just called for. And that is how you as the administrator can post anything to the topics. So I'll pause so there. Lucas, that questions. was just a that was just a bulleted list yep. that became those topics? Exactly. It doesn't even have to be bulleted. Just paragraphs? Every topic goes on its own line. So you just hit enter after each one. So if I want to put a new one in here, this is my test. I just put it on a new row and click save. And then this is my test will show up there. So it gives you control as a facilitator to change all the the topics on the fly while your event is happening. If you would like to change the room names, then we will edit your event. That'll be up here. I'll click edit on the event. Well, first let's talk about who has access to edit the event. So the people who have access to edit the event are the, pe the person who created the event and the person who created the circle, if this event is in a circle. Well, what is a circle? A circle is a space on Kiko Chat for your group of people to collaborate. A circle has shared tools, such as a calendar. It also has a weekly newsletter, if you want it. It also has a place to post articles and blog posts, if you want it. It also has a place for written conversations by email, if you want it. So a circle has many tools. And one of those tools, as I mentioned, is the calendar. And on the calendar, you can have many events. This is one event on the calendar. So we have this concept of a circle, which is for a group of people. And a circle has the creator of the circle and also assistant administrators for the circle. So if you are a creator or an assistant administrator of the circle, then you also have the ability to edit anything in that circle, including the events. So here you would have an edit button to edit the event, just like the person who created this event. Let me pause there and take any questions on any of that. Well, Lucas, can we back up? You started your uh, narrative in terms of the event. So is the event the primary uh, and the circle sub folder? So, and, yes. uh, so people come to Kiko for live events, and these events can just be standalone on their own. They just have a link, and there's no circle. It's just an event. But other people come, and they have, we, we heard from, uh, it was Lynn who mentioned that her group is going to have events every week or every other week. And so every week. Yeah. Every week. So mm -hmm. you'll have your events on the calendar, multiple events and all of them will be on this calendar for your circle. So the advantage is all your people who've gone to your previous events, unless they opt out to your newsletter, they're gonna be notified that you have, here's all these events coming up in the next three weeks. So it helps you maintain momentum. You think about when you host a Zoom call, you get a lot of people to come for one Zoom meeting, but then after the Zoom meeting's over, they don't come back. There's no place for them to return the Zoom meeting is over. So here on Kiko, you have a place where they can come back over and over again. They can go back to the previous events. They can look at the notes that you wrote. They can see the recording that you posted. They can come to your future events. That's the goal to, to do. 
So just to be clear, I created an event. It happened yesterday. And uh, I, I can't remember if I put it in the calendar anywhere. So uh, how do I follow up what I did? Okay, let's, I'll cover that question. We'll say, um, how does the calendar work? <laughs> okay. And here we have Eva's question about naming all your rooms. So there's several things that you can configure in the meeting. Some of these things you might wanna do when your meeting is happening and other things you might wanna do before your meeting happens. So anything that you might wanna do before, while your meeting's happening, we put here. Let's say you want a timer. So 30 minutes, everybody at all the breakout rooms sees the timer. Then maybe you wanna post a notice that says, please return to the main room in five minutes. And then everybody, including you right now, will see this notification. If people are engrossed in their conversation in Zoom and not looking at the Kiko chat page, they won't notice this. So this gets at this question down here in line 29. How do you get everyone back in the main room when a lot of people are in breakouts? Well, uh, the first thing I'd say is set their expectations so that they know there's a timer counting down. And then someone is going to notice that time is up. Let's head back. But if they're really having fun in their conversation, they might want to stay there for a while. So you can go into that room, hold up a quick sign that says, please return to the main room, or you can give them a five minute warning, or you can have an, a technical assistant do that for you, someone that's on your team. So all those sorts of options. We don't pull them back into the main room. They must move themselves. If you want to use the types of Zoom breakout rooms that you might have used in the past, where you can quote, push and pull people into breakout rooms. You say, we've got 100 people, I wanna divide them into groups of four, snap your fingers, and now they're in Zoom breakout rooms. You can do that within each one of these Zoom meetings. As long as you come in as the host of your Zoom meeting, you have all the facilities that are available to you as the Zoom host in a regular Zoom meeting. So if you wanna use those regular Zoom breakouts, you could do that. And you're pushing and pulling people between those breakout rooms. And that's how you can gather them all back. So even to get a little more nuanced on that, even if people are in a Zoom breakout meeting, they can use these Kiko breakout spaces if you want. I don't think people do that often. If you're gonna move people to breakout rooms in Zoom, just within that Zoom meeting and not using these breakout spaces, I would recommend having one Google Doc or you can use, all. the advantage of having all your breakout spaces set up here is that each of these can have exactly what you want on them. So if I go to room five, I can see a Google doc, I could see a Google spreadsheet, I could see a Google form, I could see Mentimeter, I could see a word cloud tool. All the tools that you want for each room can just be preset. So people would know, all right, I'm in group number six, I'm gonna go to room six. So that's a complex topic of breakout rooms within breakout rooms. I mention it for those that have used Zoom breakout rooms in the past to say, if you like those, you have them here. If that's complex, then I would just say, use the, Zoom, the rooms that we have here as your breakouts. And each one of these breakouts has its own Zoom meeting over here. A few more of these admin controls. As the administrator, you can click view all breakout notes, and then you will see the notes for the main room, the notes for room one, the notes for room two. That helps, and you'll see them being typed live, so you can know which rooms might be moving quickly and which rooms are struggling. You can click here to see data about when people joined, so you know is, I can jump here, and you can see who, joined each room at what time. It's a little geeky here, but it at least tells you when people are clicking around. So uh, like we could see, I, I went over to breakout room zero, which is the main room. And then I went over to breakout room one, and then I came back to breakout room zero. Um, with, with more time and patience, you can go through that. We just expose the raw data to you so that you have, can keep your fingers on the pulse of what's happening. 
You can assign people to breakouts. We'll give that a try here. If I want to put people in groups of three, I say save, and then you'll notice all of your names are now assigned to different breakout rooms. But the difference here is that you would move yourself. And then you'd move yourself back. So if you want to shuffle people, click shuffle, everybody moves around. My name doesn't go down there since I'm the one that pressed the button. I built this just in case people want to use it, but I don't think that, that it's used very often. If you want to use speed networking, I would recommend do that when you're at the main room and use Zoom's native breakout rooms where you can divide people up into groups of three or four, press a button, and then bring them all back to the main room. And you do that for a few minutes while people are coming in late, and then you can get on with the rest of your program. Or better yet, you start 15 minutes early, and then people get comfortable, get a chance to meet with each other, some networking ahead of time. That, that allows you to have fewer latecomers if you give them something to come 15 minutes early for. Any questions on any of that? I know that I'm covering a lot, so that's why I'm recording it so that you can go back in the video if, if you're interested. When I click clear here, then it goes back to all the, the, the topics are gone. Yeah, Luca, I've got a question. It's Landon. Um, and so I'm just looking here at like how the breakout rooms kind of interface with Zoom and with like, you know, harvesting all of this. So, um, you know, I'm just sort of wondering, you know, one, do I have to bring my own Zoom line? And then two, how, how does all the information that gets collected sort of be easily gotten? Do I need to copy and paste it all? Is that kind of printed out as a PDF or you know, Word doc? Great questions, Landon. So first off, you do not need your own Zoom meeting. All of these, you don't need a Zoom Pro account. You don't have to pay Zoom. You pay us and we pay Zoom. So Zoom charges us half a cent a minute per person. We charge you one cent per minute per person. Hmm. We also, for, Got it. for private events, we also charge $1 per day per person. So if it's an event that's gonna be two days, has 50 people, and you want it to be private, then it's an additional $50 per day because it's 50 people. If you have a, but you don't have to restrict the event if you wanna keep it public and let anyone join. We don't share your link, so the only people that are gonna come are gonna be people that you've invited. But if you want that added level of protection, then, one dollar per day per person the next question about where does all your content live so this tool we provide by default called etherpad and you can download it here you can export it as a html or plain text then you can also put a google doc up here and i will show some examples of that and those google docs would live on your google drive so we're just uh -huh. showing them to your participants you, with Google Drive, you control access. So you could say whether you want it to be view only or editable, and then it stays in your Google Drive after the event is over. So how would, how would that interface here, right? Because like, I think what, what works about this is, is all sort of streamlined. So I would leave a link here, and then people would have to click through the few different pages. They'd have to click through this page and the Zoom and then the Google Docs, which is probably fine, right? Let's, let's do an example of uh, showing how to put Google Docs in this page. So I'm gonna go next to edit and I'm also gonna answer Eva's question uh, that she said, how do we change the room name? So click, uh, just over here, we were talking about all the things you might change during a meeting. And then here are the things that you would set up before a meeting happens. And then you could test out your event space. So I click edit and this is a very simple interface, not beautiful, but it gets you what you need. You put your topic of your event, your description. So this is what I did when I initially created it. The duration, you set your time zone. Whatever time zone you select is gonna be the time zone shown to users who are not signed in. I'm gonna click more options and customize breakout spaces. Eva, this is where we get to your question. Number of breakout spaces, we could say up to 100. And add a title for each breakout space. First, I will say uh, the main space, I'll say, opening circle, if, if you're a, an open space facilitator, you might call it that, or you might just call it main room, whatever you prefer, auditorium, lobby, completely customizable. Then we wanna say red room, orange room, just giving them names, yellow room, green room. So when we save this, you'll start to see those names show up in the, in, in the event. And 
this is where you can edit the topics, but you also saw how to edit the topics live on the fly. Landon, here's where we add Google Docs. So I'm gonna get an example Google Doc, and I'll just copy that here. This is what it looks like on Google, and we're gonna embed that. So just copy the link, be sure to set your sharing settings to what you want. So if you want it to be read only, this is where you do it. If you want everybody to be able to edit it, this is where you do it. So I've got the link copied and I just paste it in. If I wanna put another link in there, so let's say some post-its, I'll take this Google drawing here. Someone put that in. Uh, that's cool. We can make that the background maybe. Let's see. Let's also try uh, order, send it back. <laughs> uh, you got to love it that somebody just decided to, <laughs> to, to make that better. So now it's, <laughs> I think that's <laughs> funny. So we've got the link copied here and I'll just paste it here. So one per line. And I don't want to overwrite the notes we already have in the main room. So I'm going to put a blank line there. So the blank line is for the main room. And this is for first breakout. This is for the second breakout. You'll see what that looks like. Let's go take a look at our event now that we've pasted in these docs and the room names. And that we've now said we want 100 rooms. I'll click update. Yeah. We're taken back into the event. So now we see we have 100 rooms. Mm. They have the names that we just assigned. We have the same document here, the default Etherpad, and you click red room. And now we see our example Google Doc. We click orange room, and then we'll see our post-its. And you can make it look however you like, finding a better- oh, So image. Google gets embedded in there. Exactly. Oh, that's very smart. And you can make multiple tabs. So let's say you wanted to put both the Google Doc and the Post-its. And by the way, I see people are moving in there. You can feel free to edit this and we could see you change things on this page. So I see somebody in purple has grabbed this. And if you want to grab a Post-it and type on it, we, we would all be able to see you do that. Someone's got this posted here and they're typing hi. Thanks very much. I'll just move that the border back. I think that there's a way that you could set an image as the background so that it cannot be moved. All right, thanks to that brave volunteer who moved the post-it. And then there's something called dot voting. If you're a facilitator, you might've heard of it. So you can, as you can pre-populate a bunch of dots here and let people put the dots where they, where they think the important ideas are. So you can start to see, all right, this post-it has a lot of dots. Everybody gets one dot or two dots, however you want to set it up. But just uh, letting you think about different ways to facilitate. So we just try to be pretty plain, give you all the capabilities to move things around how you like. So the next thing we're saying is, well, what if we wanted to put post-its on the same page as the Google Doc? So we're gonna, what we're going to do is put multiple tabs across the top. I'm gonna click edit and then more options. So I'm going back into editing the event. Again, this is something you would do before the event begins. And I'm gonna call this one Google underscore doc. And I put a colon. So this is gonna be the title of my tab. I'm gonna zoom in so you could see it a little better. And then the title of the other one is gonna be post its and a colon. So there's the title and a colon. There's a title and a colon. Maybe instead of Google Doc, people don't need to know it's a Google Doc. I just want to tell them it's notes. That's, that's simpler. And then I want to put both of these in the same room. So right now, this one is on room two. This one's on room three. I'm going to put them all on the same line. And by the way, I know this is a lot of information, but it's all right here too. If you click more info, then you can patiently just read what it says. So you don't have to memorize all this. So let's say we want to put both of these in the same room. Well, that means we need to put them on the same line. Once you put them on the same line, just put a space in between to separate them. That's going to make sure that we know it needs to be multiple tabs. So 
Here's going to be tab one. It says notes, and here's tab two. Before I go, any questions while we're looking at this? Yeah, Lucas, uh, somebody showed me, uh, not in this format, but uh, Google has a, um, a document in presentations where they show a circle, and then uh, people that attend the meeting can be, uh, their name could be in the circle at, at the uh, outer edge of the circle. Have you ever seen that document? I have. I will, I will sh share an example of what that is. There's a YouTube video that, that I've seen of mm -hmm. one facilitator who did that. And what Tony's talking about there is you have a picture of a circle and you have faith. Everybody puts their own photo and they even can use a talking object like a microphone and they move the microphone over to who's going to talk And it. Some facilitators find that to be very helpful for helping people feel like they're actually in the room with one another. So I'm going to scroll all the way down and click update. And then when we go back to breakout space two, we're going to see the difference. So in the red room, now we have our notes and our post-its on two different tabs. And so that opens us up to a whole lot of possibilities for whatever you want to create. So you can pre-populate all of these rooms can have the same documents or they can have copies of the same document. And it's completely up to you for what you want to do. I'll go to back to the main so, room. Oh yeah, go ahead, please. Yeah, this is Ted again. So users in the room, can they also create new tabs? They cannot, just the people who have administrative access to this event. People who are not admins cannot change any of the things that you saw us change, such as the number of breakout rooms, the topics, or the titles of the rooms. And, and the, the um, it, seemed, it would seem natural to be able to create something like a CSV that had room name, room topic, room links or tabs or something like that. Is, is that a, is it possible to do that and then import it into this or? Yes, I, mean, I, I work with people <laughs> who are hosting events and they, they do that um, often. So here's the internet identity workshop number 30. This is the first time they had to move online. They had 349 people participate. It wrapped up a few weeks ago. We'll click participate now and they have a photo that's up here at the top left. I'll show you how to do that. You see, here's all their breakout spaces going down. Even though this ended up three weeks ago, some people keep coming back, I guess, to take a look at the notes since the notes were, were pretty outstanding. They had 200 pages of notes generated from this three-day event. And if you go to agenda day three here, this is the Google spreadsheet that they used to populate their agenda wall. So they pre-populate it with the, the session time. So this is session 18, because it's day three. And they just say breakout ABCD. They let people fill in their topic and their name. And then you can copy this and paste it right over here where it says admin controls. And so yes, you could definitely do that. Do it in a spreadsheet to make it visual or a CSV if you prefer. And then if you want to manage all your tabs, I have seen democracylab.org do it exactly how you mentioned where you, I would definitely recommend keeping track of your tags, tabs outside of Kiko so that when it's time to copy all of them and put them in, like you're going into day two, you've already set it up before participants arrive. You've already made sure that the red room has this document, the blue room is that document, and then you're just copying and pasting when it's time. So keeping track of your tabs outside is absolutely essential, especially if you have multiple people editing your event, multiple admins, someone might overwrite somebody else. So you wanna keep track of your, your tabs outside. How does the calendar work? Tony, I'm gonna take that question, put it down at the bottom so we can keep going with um, more stuff about events and then we will get into other questions. Can individual sessions have restricted numbers? That's coming soon because a lot of people have started asking about that. How to facilitate a meeting with Kiko. Here I've given you some tips 
the tips. I think I should write a blog post about this. How to have breakout rooms. So is this Landon with a question? Uh, yeah, that's me, yeah. Did, did we answer this one? Uh, I'm just trying to get back to... Um... The question was how to have breakout rooms. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, I mean, I, I got some more questions about the sort of the detail of it. Um, but are we wrapping up here in one minute or? No, no. I mean, I'm, I've, I've got, I, I, many people probably can stay another 15 minutes. I have an hour. Um, I have more time after this. So I'm going to stay until I answer all your questions. And then it'll all be accessible through the video too. So. Yeah, good. So I, you know, I guess I sort of understand breakout rooms. I. You know, I think part of what I'm uh, like grappling with here is like how it all connects into one. Like I, like I see all the functionalities there. I saw what you just showed about the internet identity. It's all cool. And I'm just kind of like wondering in, in my head, you know, how to best lay it out. And then I'm also wondering, um, you know, like how, how easy is this going to be for users? Like when they step into it, you know, and I guess I'm still trying to like, because I, I see there's different ways to, to work things and I'm just trying to think in my head, like what's the best way to kind of collect this all, right? Yeah, I think after so, listening to this for 45 minutes, a lot of people are on overload because there's so many options and permutations. Yeah, there are different options and combinations, right? So like, you know, it's all there, right? It's just a matter of... What, what are the best what, techniques? Absolutely. So yeah, if your head is there, then the place to go is what outcomes do I want to achieve with my event? What are my goals? What are my purposes? And then yeah. what do the people in the event need to do to create those outcomes? Do they need to be listening to a plenary speaker? So you can have a Zoom webinar here connected to the main room, or you can have a Zoom conversations. So do you want people in listening or do you want people engaged in small groups? Do you want people to engage with the same group over two days? Do you want to mix them up? So there's a lot yeah, of- so most of our. Uh, so we're meeting like this Saturday um, is, you know, it'll, it'll be, I don't know, 10, 20 people, maybe a few more. And we want to have a main plenary and then have breakout rooms to deep dive into the, the, the topics that matter. So we're having them fill it out like as a part of their survey. And then uh, I'd, I'd like them to come back after, you know, it's a three hour event. So, you know, kind of half an hour, maybe one hour. Welcome. Who's, who's here? Who's interested in what? Who's facilitating what breakout room? And then an hour to facilitate, uh, you know, of course, with some transition time in between, and then an mm -hmm. hour to sort of go over, this is what we've learned, and here are our next steps. You know, that's kind of like the breakout. And then we're going to have like a virtual pub time where there's going to be some networking after where people can stay on, chit chat, keep working, whatever. Very cool. Well, uh, so a whole bunch of, so I think you can accomplish a lot of that with what you saw. You've got the main room. You can set up different Google Docs for people to go when it's time to break out. You know how to set the mm. topics. You know how to set the room names. And mm -hmm. uh, I could show you how to put a photo up here. You saw in the Internet Identity Workshop, they've got one photo here. They've got a documentation center with a different photo in Breakout mm -hmm. Space A. They've got a, one of their sponsors, and they, you can put sponsors in different places. So if you want to put these photos here, you're going to go to Edit Your Event. Click Edit more options, scroll all the way down to here, event design template. So you, you choose which template you want. Uh, I've got one that called the gardens. You can create these here, event design templates here. Mm. So it's just a bunch of breakout space templates that have a name and a photo. And we'll click update. So now you'll see those photos in all of our breakout spaces. Mm-hmm. Uh, it brings Lucas, me back to the last event where was Landon's someone asked question. to back up. Oh, sorry. Here we go. So now when we reload this page, there we are. Let me fly through a bunch of oh, these wow. questions quickly so that uh, if anybody has to go in, then we can follow up on any, any single one. So what does it cost if, at, the, at the bottom of the homepage? Is the pricing? Got it. And that is one cent per minute per person plus a dollar per day per person if it's a private event. If it's a private circle, a dollar per month per member. If it's a public circle, there isn't that charge. 
if you're a nonprofit, uh, we can waive some of those fees like the privacy charge. We also will help you configure your event. We'll give anyone an, an hour of our time absolutely to help make their event configured the way that they want. If you want another hour of our time or however many hours, it's $100 an hour, 10% off for nonprofits. Where can people take notes? In the space on the right-hand side. Do you bring your own Zoom link? It's not necessary. If you want to do that and you're paying us for customizing the event, then we do make that possible. So we had the Linux Foundation. They have actually hundreds of Zoom accounts and we help them reuse their Zoom accounts in here. So if you're paying us hourly for your conference, we can help you configure that. Can multiple sessions be live streamed and recorded simultaneously? Absolutely. So each of these, there's a, each of these is a separate video chat. If you click admin controls, you can join video as host. It's necessary to join video as host in order to record. So you'll be the Zoom host. Anyone else who clicks that button is going to be the co-host after you. Hosts and co-hosts can either record or they can let other people record. Hosts and co-hosts can mute people and remove people. You don't need the meeting to start with a host or co-host. That's how we started today. And then I went back in as the host in order to record. If you want to delegate specific people to be able to record, click edit, and then you can list their email addresses or their usernames. So you can say, I want Joe Smith to only be able to record the red room or Joe Smith to be able to record all the rooms or anybody could record all the rooms. So that is um, Zoom host access. Uh, there was a follow-up question. No, you answered it already. <laughs> Great, someone said, where is the recording? The recording will be saved to your computer. And when you close the meeting, Zoom will pop up and it will show you where it's gonna save it. How long will the recording record? I don't know the max. The longest one I've done was an hour and a half. But I think that if you check out Zoom documentation, they will have the answer to that. But I will, I will wanna look that up myself. What is the type of light on my face? Because that's Tony's question. It's just a regular light. Uh, and there's some natural light here from a window. That's good to think about. Some, I saw someone with $20 LED lights that it was a square and flat, looked like, like a panel, like a solar panel. And it made her place look like a movie set with that kind of lighting. So on Amazon, there might be some LED lighting for, for video chats. Is admin controls only available to certain participants and hosts? True, you cannot see it because you are not the host of this meeting. But if I go in and I click edit and I scroll down more options and I go down to security, I will say, grant Zoom host access to everyone. There, let every participant host the Zoom video chat. So now when I click update, if you refresh your page, you will see the admin controls button. And that admin controls button for you will only have join video as host. It won't have all these other options. And so that allows you to record the session you have to leave Zoom and come back as the host if you want that to work. Hmm. It's interesting. All right. How do you make tabs at the top of the document? We covered that. And remember, please, the notes, there's always more info when you're trying to do anything on this edit interface. There's too much to remember, so we put it in as more info. And you click on that, it'll tell you more info. How do you get everyone back in the same room? I, we covered that earlier in the video. You mentioned I can make recording show up in the circle. How do I do that? So. Post it to YouTube after it's downloaded to your computer. And then I go to this event that I've hosted in the past. These are all the trainings we have here. And let's find one that has a recording. So this one has a recording. So what I did is I went back to free training. This was May 14th. And I posted it right in here. How did I do that? I clicked edit. And then just post the recording like this. Just paste in the YouTube link and then we will automatically show it as a YouTube embedded video that people could play right there for you. All right. Can I turn on recording as a default? Unfortunately, at this time, it's not possible. But I'm going to make note of that so that if it becomes easier in the future, we will definitely make that possible. The way that that would work is we record to the cloud. And if you are paying us to help you with your event, we can manually do that for you. But uh, in the self-serve, that's it, just not a configuration option that's built in yet. How does the calendar work? So we just saw the calendar. I'm gonna go back to, I'm gonna go back to the circle that we're in. So I click 
this button up here, and I can see the event. We're in an event, the RSVP page for this event. So let, let's go back there. This is the RSVP page for the event. It's just very basic. You could put like IW had their sponsor logo on here. Then you can also see where is everybody on the map. So there's 10 people. Click map view. You can see where everybody is, which is kind of neat. And so these are the people that are present. Oh, wow. And then these are people who are RSVP'd. So the, 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 they have the same options down there. As the administrator, how did, how did you get to the map? Okay, I'll show that again. I'll refresh the page so it starts off blank. So you're going to have the people who are present here. This takes a few seconds to load. And you also have the, the RSVPs. So I'm going to go 10 people are present. Click here. Click map view. Or list view. Or skill connections. Kind of see. It's, this one's not commonly used, but some circles might find it helpful. So the question was about the calendar. We are in this circle called Learn About Kiko Chat, and a circle has many tools. Here are the tools for the circle, the gardens, member directory, calendar of events, articles, links, and files, and a newsletter. So let's go to the calendar, and it's just a list of events that are upcoming. At the bottom, you've got the list of previous events, and that's where I post recordings. So this event that we're in right now is over from the duration that we put it in. So you will see it here under previous events, and we will put the recording in there. And then other views of the data, the calendar view. And uh, for IIW, they, we integrated for them Google Calendar. And this was important because their event was happening over three days. Notice they changed the name to session schedule. We try to allow people to change the names of a lot of these things on Kiko because they want to call them sessions. So that was very important. Um, also, they put a link right to the main meeting space so that people can get there from wherever they are. They don't have to go to the calendar and then find the event. We also customize this for them. And you could do this when you edit your circle. You just, you just say, what do you want to point the homepage of your circle to? So if you only have one event in your circle, it's helpful to point the homepage of your circle to that one event. People will often click up here and they'll go directly to your event. You can add, also add FAQs to your FAQ section and people can search across your circle. We'll click session schedule. Here we integrated a Google Calendar for them. This event took place back then. I will go to the week view and go back a few weeks. So we'll start here. They had some pre-sessions. This is highly encouraged. Give people 30 minute sessions to come in for happy hour or lunch hour and be there with them and answer their questions about the space. Make sure they can Get the concept that there's going to be breakout rooms, make sure they can turn on their video chat. And then they use the same session spaces, the same nine breakout rooms, plus all the demo rooms down below over and over again, 30 times. So all the sessions happen in the same places, but they created a different event on their calendar for session three, for session seven, for session nine, and this way people would have a notification coming on their calendar because they can integrate this with Google Calendar. It is a Google Calendar. It goes right to them. They don't have to come to Kiko Chat to get the answers. So that's something that we can help you do too. If again, uh, that, that's how we can help you customize these events. So here we are in today's event. Back in to participate now. See if we got to all the questions. That was how the calendar works. One more thing I'll show in the circle. Click menu and gardens. The gardens are fun. The gardens are a place that's always on. Think of it an event. Think of it as an event that doesn't have a start or an end. And it has plenty of breakout rooms. So when, welcome to essentially the main room. Click to join video. It's pretty simple. People can't get lost here. So that launches Zoom. Scroll down a little bit, you'll see all of your breakout gardens. And you can see who is in which garden. So you can have happy hour events here. This is for impromptu gatherings when you don't know who you want to meet and people are, have a regular rhythm of every lunch on Wednesday, people show up here. That could be your rhythm. And just click to join another garden, see a different picture, click to join another garden, see a different picture, and your, your profile icon will update. In each garden, you can join Zoom. You can also set the topic. So if I want to talk about cooking, 
save topic and people see that I'm talking about cooking in Canada and people can join me there. You can customize this to be whatever you want. So here's a fun one, Joker Gardens. So this is some, a, a theater group. So. so Lucas, I have a question of, of, about what Landon was talking about and it ties into this uh, garden thing. When people drop in ad hoc spontaneously, their I, email and ID is, is captured, is that right? And then is there a way for me to follow up and uh, you know, invite them to another uh, event or another circle? How, how do I maintain, uh, you Got apply it. technically, but the, the first step in maintaining connections and maintaining a network. Excellent, so people could drop off the call at any time and know we're at the top of the hour. So people can come into your circle and create a guest account. They do not have to add their email address unless you require that only people with specific email addresses can have access to your circle. You would okay. do that editing your circle up here. This is how you can control access to your circle and make it a private circle. We don't, if people give Kiko their email address, we don't give that to anyone, advertisers or even people who create the circles. But that's just to respect their privacy. So that's in our privacy policy is right up front. We take it very seriously so people feel comfortable coming into all these spaces. Now, you as a circle administrator, you want to stay in touch with them. So the way that you can do that is click menu and more, and then you can write them all an email. And then you can ask them, hello, this is Tony from this event. We don't have your email address yet. Please submit your email address on this Google form so you can collect it elsewhere. Also, if you are using Eventbrite or Cvent, you can collect payment through Eventbrite. And then when people register on Eventbrite, they will receive notification and invitation to your circle that's private. And you will have their email address over there on Eventbrite. You can send messages to them through Eventbrite or through Kiko Chat. that'll be your choice. So if controlling the data is very important to you, and also if you wanna control payment, that can go right through Eventbrite. Collect money through Eventbrite, they pay you, collect email addresses and user info through Eventbrite. Now you have it. That's the what I would recommend. Let's see if we have any more questions on the board here. All right. So Eva, you want to tell us a little bit more about what you found with uh, email? Is that um, it Eva's was not question? Me. Oh, no. okay. I don't know who has the light green, but. Is that Linda? Oh, yeah, that's me. Um, Hi, hello. Uh, yeah, so I had an event and I didn't collect emails because I didn't think I needed to. Uh, but I found that basically no one responds when I send email with the Kiko chat message function. Mm -hmm. um, and I. I think it's because they don't really, un it's not obvious that this email, it just looks like a notification from some random internet app that they might not have a strong association to. Uh, it's not clearly branded as coming from my event. Uh, that's my hypothesis, why I don't get so much response, but I'm not really sure. Makes a lot of sense. I'll show you what an example looks like. So I'll, I'll pull one up. And maybe there's ways that we can make this better. So it's gonna say something like Kiko chat message from Linda, Kiko chat message from Lucas. Uh, Lucas, do people need to have Kiko chat accounts to participate? They can create a guest account. I'll, I'll dig more into that. So. Here, Linda, this is what people receive. It'll say, Kiko chat message from Linda or whatever your username is. Hello, mm -hmm. the administrator of such and such circle sent the following message. And then it says message from Linda. And there's the message that this person wrote to all their participants. You know, this was a five day event and they were just sending out daily event uh, notifications like this. So that's how it comes in. If 
if it's very important to get all those emails going out to every single person, then ask them to submit their email address some other way. Often people have the email address of all the people they want to invite to an event anyway, but you're going to have more success sending email through Eventbrite than Kiko because Eventbrite's a much bigger website than ours. So maybe though, Linda, we can do something to make this better. So if you want it's like a different title, it could say instead of Brit British symposium here in the message, it can say it from here, message from British fascist symposium online 2020. Would that, would that be preferable? Uh, I think so. Like this is an area of organizing where I don't have a super good intuition about what actually works, but I think it would help to have uh, the topic instead of Kiko chat message, like referencing my event. Uh, I also think it would help if, I don't know if it's possible, but it looks like the um, sender is me and not the Kiko chat team. Um, but I don't really know. I think it also has to do, like nowadays everyone has Gmail and then Gmail is guessing, is this a notification, is this, and like sorting it in different places. Um, and I don't know what, like, uh, how important it is to to convince Google that this is important. Uh, and I, yeah, I, I, the yeah, first I know thing, maybe other people have intuitions about this. I'm glad you brought this up. We'll, we're going to remove this and we will just put the name of your event and not the person because they might not know you, they just know the name of their event. So <laughs> message from event name. This part we can change too, but it's a little bit harder because the way that the email providing is set up. So, right. Thank yeah, you for it, that. I'm, yeah, I'm guessing it would make it good, a good, big difference to have the the title be mentioning. I guess the circle. Then it would be the, mm -hmm. uh, or even that I could uh, like customize that when I send an email, I can just write myself what it should be. And, and you can, can, oh yeah, yeah. Okay, ah, great idea. Even better. Yeah, and then, I, then I'll then i figure out what works and can play around with <laughs> it. All right, thank, thank you for that suggestion. And today we can make the change where it's not gonna say this anymore, but then adding some other fields you can customize that can come later. Great suggestion. Here are some helpful links, the Kiko Chat homepage. There's a one pager on the offerings with Kiko looks like this. It shows a bit about why we built it. And what the gardens do. They can have facilitated webinars, conferences with parallel breakout sessions, a little bit about circles, and what's coming soon is exhibit halls. You can create your own free events on the demo circle just to test it out. You can create a new circle of your own at this link. You get a thousand free minutes after you enter your credit card. All the upcoming office hours and trainings are listed at this link. Here's the full user guide. And Landon had a question about something like virtual happy hours. We posted one here, host an online virtual happy hour. This is one of hmm. the just posted this one yesterday and it just takes you through how to set it up and what your guests will see, they, a guest username. Then they join video, you change the background images, Actually, how participants can set up. Before we move on. So guys, these Any are questions about that? Our, our policies. Um, and Denise, when we, if we update so just, we just put like all our thinking out there. <laughs> you know, it's only a, it's only a happy. Hour, there's a lot you can do so to make it great. That we would want, you know. We Ted, any questions? I feel like your audience. Does anyone else hear that? Yeah, there's something. Sorry, no problem. There's some background noise. Uh, he got it. Good. And uh, so that's the user guide. All the tools on Kiko Chat. You can see screenshots of all of them. So these are all the ones that are in a circle. Notifications events, gardens, calendar, Google calendar, virtual how do, party. How do we get access to like these notes that have been taken today? And um, 
Is this stay up and be live, or should we copy and paste the? It'll stay for chat? you. Yeah, well, okay. Uh huh. And that's one of the advantages of Kiko. Uh, even after the Zoom meeting is over, they all remain here. So you just come back. It, you just close Zoom, and you'll see it behind. All these links are down here. My contact info. There's also a Google group of people that are using Kiko. Has a few dozen folks, and it's pretty active. If you're an online facilitator, you might be interested in joining some of these circles like the Liberating Structures Community of Practice, Dialogue, and Open Space. We're translating Kiko into a bunch of languages. I think we got all the languages covered that are commonly used. Um, Tagalog is the next one. So that should be coming quickly. And here's another interesting video of recording of a live open space event. We have a good session tomorrow, which is about from the facilitator's perspective. Heidi, who did the internet identity workshop, is gonna walk us through her design thinking and her approach. Spell what time is that tomorrow? Okay, so that is gonna be at learn.kikochat.com. That's line 41. And it's gonna be Friday, May 22nd, 12 Eastern and 4 UTC. God, I don't know if I can make that tomorrow, but that does seem useful. We will have a recording for sure. Okay. And then we have two more questions. This would be Linda, spell checking in the notes. So that one's going to be a little bit of out of reach since Etherpad is a complex open source tool. So you can use any notes you like, such as Google Docs, which has spell checking built in. So I know that this one, unfortunately, is something that we can't make happen. And if you want the link of the interactive post-its, you can go to the red room and I'll click post-its. So you'll see them. And if you want them, I'm going to go down to the bottom and it says you can open the tool in a new window and I will click. Okay. So this is the tool in its own window. Now I'll just go back to the notes where someone asked for the link and I will share it. So that's back to the main room. And the link of the interactive post-its. There we go. Great questions today. I'll stay on for any additional ones. Yeah, Luca, you know, I've got a few things that I'd, I'd love to sort of talk to you about quickly. Sure. Let's see. Do you mind if it's recorded or you mean to pause the recording? Yeah, I think it's fine. Okay. Yeah, sure. This helps other people think through. And then did anyone else have any additional questions? I'll, I'll stop the sharing for a moment just to see. Anybody else have a question that they'd like to ask? Just thanks very much for this, Luke. It's very uh, interesting. I'm looking forward to learning more about it. You're welcome, Ted. When I post the recording on YouTube, you'll get an email because you attended today. And it'll also be right here at the link for anybody that wants to attend. So thanks. great to see everybody. Great to meet you. Bye, Eva. Uh, so I think, um, you know, like I think part of, part, of, part of what I'm grappling with is, you know, probably some of this is going to take me actually doing it and, and I have to go out and get like a new, you know, new computer. So, um, you know, and I haven't done it. So like, I'm kind of just watching it, but like, it seems like it's pretty well laid out. Um, And I guess I'm just sort of wondering, um, and I can't see that right now. Yeah, the great thing to do is, let me go back to sharing the screen. So right here, create a circle of your own, or even before that, line 40, create your own free test event at demo.kikochat.com. And you could just try it out with your friends and see how it feels like from a participant perspective. And it's, well, it's an event like the one you joined today, but when it's an event that you design, it's a different feeling. Yeah, no, totally. Uh, could you just go over like the concept of what a circle is again? Absolutely. So I'll create a, a test circle here. Kikochat.com slash new. And my example circle. And I'll say one sentence description. This is for testing. And we'll say testing one. Oh, the custom link. Two. Wow. Testing 12. 
you can make a circle, a subcircle of another circle. And you have something like 75 options here for dealing with sponsorship or do you want your members to pay? Oh, oh like what you have people pay like as they come in or? Yeah, so it could be free for you. You actually earn money from your circle. So we charge, either you pay for all your people's Zoom minutes because we're assuming you have an organization or mm -hmm. they pay for their own way, which would be a flat fee of $3 per month per person. And if you charge them $5 per month per person, you get whatever's extra. Oh, that's actually quite smart. You could like create, create a circle and then that can be a part of like, I mean, it wouldn't be a big revenue stream, but it would certainly help pay for like startup costs. And, exactly. You know, other costs that there are to sort of keep these things going, right? That's right. It takes your time. And when people see that you're working hard to get in speakers and host events, they want to pay for it. What I find is the, the best model though, is people are more likely to pay 20, 40, $50 for a well-designed event than a membership that goes every month. So yeah. I'd recommend yeah, giving yeah, free it. membership in your circle, but doing a focused event. Like when you host one that's got some kind of reputation or got some gusto to it. You exactly. Charge, I get it. Yeah. There, some people are paying hundreds of dollars for the last, the IW one that we, we saw because it, it, it is so impactful for that community. Then mm. you can limit access by email address. And another interesting one, I click here, privacy option, so restrict action access by email address, privacy option one, and option two, require all new members receive an invitation from existing members. So I, I wanna start one of these circles on my own, which is I wanna invite the most interesting people I know and let them invite five of the most interesting people they know and let it just grow and see who shows up. So that's another way to organize a circle and. I don't know. <laughs> I'm interested to see what happens. And, and how do you keep these conversations ongoing? Like, you know, they're like, I'm in, you know, since COVID's happened, I'm in a ton of Slack groups, you know, I'm part of like the group of people who are involved in a COVID response, um, mm -hmm. you know, for the community and we're specifically working on like the database backend. So, I mean, this is really useful for, for us. Right. But, you know, and Slack is kind of like a good ongoing tool because it, it, it organizes channels and thoughts. You can app people and get them involved again, you know, and people sort of step away. Um, do you have anything that, that you sort of recommend or do you use Slack at all or? Yeah, so we have some Slack integrations that are possible here. So one example, I will pull up Slack. And- Oh, you Slack, great. Uh -huh. I'll stop share for a moment pull up Slack and get to the Liberating Structures Community of Practice. <laughs> there are so many Slack groups, it's amazing. So here is one way that we integrated Kiko into this Slack community. The first one, is, uh, I'll start here, this one, where people are posting events onto Kiko and then they show up in the events channel in this community. Mm. So that one circle on Kiko is connected to one Slack community. And that's why they've got such, like you take a look at their calendar. It's the community's really adopted it. Look at all the events they've posted and all these events are not necessarily events on Kiko chat. So you can post an event that's going to happen anywhere, but is relevant to your community. And so it goes out as a notification and every, this is also gets to the question of how do you maintain momentum? Every Monday morning, the weekly newsletter goes out, which says, here's all the events coming up for the next three weeks. So it's that mm. regular drumbeat every Monday to say, mm -hmm. here's what's coming. And also here's what was created last week, any blog posts or resources that were shared or conversations that were started. So one answer is that rhythm. The second thing is hosting video events that are open for your community, kind of this happy hour idea that we talked about we go to the guide and there was one for happy hour, which we took a look at. I think it's right here. So 
giving people the opportunity to actually speak to each other and not just type to each other. I think, especially when you do it where people can move themselves between breakout rooms, it's people feel, oh, you know, they, they prepared a space where they actually care about my opinion. Hmm. So. Okay, Nate, well, mm -hmm. I was just gonna say, this sort of gives me something to sort of chew on here. Like, it seems like you guys have all the functionality uh, and I'm just thinking about logistically how to, you know, cause this is obviously like, you know, this is gonna take something to manage the admin yeah. of it. So, um, and I think, you know, maybe the last thing is, you know, like I'm a part of a few different groups as like a super user. And I'm, I, uh, Lucas, I do like what, what you have set up here. So, you know, I'm interested in like, yeah, I think part of what I'm humming and hawing over is it seems like, you know, if I can just give you some sure. feedback on it, like, it, like, it seems like some of the UX needs a little bit of like love. Yeah. Um, and it, it seems like architecturally you have everything there. Right. And it just like, sort of like the, the user flow is I think what I'm getting a little bit not not confused with but it, like it's going to take something to sort of elevate as an administrative person so you know whoever i end up going with and i've got you know one other person i'm you know sort of looking at but you know given you're hooked in with linux and stuff it, it probably would make sense for me to sort of sort of jump in with you but i'd, I'd you know I'd love to be someone that can give you like feedback for what's working and you know if you all operate that way then i think that's kind of like what me and my team's are looking at because we're all open source and we're working on you know, um, what, what we're working on with matching supply and demand for COVID, but we're looking for sort of partners that want to sort of elevate with us. Um, well, first of all, we're definitely interested in hearing all your ideas for how to improve the platform. Right now, our goal is just increase access and connection because of COVID and things are the way they are. Yeah. People connect and our user interface, when you're editing those events, it's not beautiful for sure. But the, the key right now is just let facilitators make the connections that they want. They want Google Docs in. So some people, when, when they experience an event, they're like, oh, okay, that was, that was all that was necessary. It's not, it's not slick, but it gets the job done for getting people in a creative space, a playful space. We have all, sort, all different demographics of tech savviness and complexity and international too so hmm. you know so if, if you want kind of slick i'd say go for the gardens which it's simple and hmm. the demo gardens and then just people have their meeting there it's any image that you want there's not too much to get confused about it's a giant join video button and mm. and start people there and then once they start to see okay kiko's got these breakout rooms it's got these weekly notifications i could do an event here mm. but yeah we definitely welcome your feedback such as the one person who mentioned that the email notification titles needed to be changed so i'm glad i heard that from her but that's something that we can change very quickly so mm. other bits of friction that you find, yeah, just please let us know. And then how do I reach you? Is it best here. on Facebook or email or and phone? Oh, there it is. Oh, great. Okay, super. And then are you going to email out this link to us so that we, we have it or? Yes. So all of the, these notes are in the event that you've joined here. Mm -hmm. and. I will just send it to you right now through Zoom chat. Hmm. Oh, so that great. You can pull it down. Yeah, and I'll just save it so that I can always have it handy. It's a bit of a pain that my computer's gone down, so I'm a bit of a different space than I normally Absolutely. am. There you go. And see if you can open that on your phone before we go, because the Zoom chat will not be available after we close. Yeah. However, all of this will be available. Perfect. Right. I'll pause yes, sharing I have it. there and I'll, I'll just mention a note for all the people that are still watching. Thanks very much for your time. If you want any of these trainings, then please go to learn.kikochat.com slash events. We do these free trainings every week. We have open office hours, try to make ourselves as accessible as possible to you. Once again, it's learn.kikochat.com slash events. 
you have any questions, please reach me at lucas, L-U-C-A-S, at kikochat.com. Thanks for watching, and uh, please send us any of your questions. Bye.